Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Take the Fair Out the Gear with me, Mr. Chumley Warner. And me, Jason Bangers. And today, the second part of this video, this series, we're going to show you how, which nobody else shows you as far as I'm aware, how to put the firmware on the GoTek floppy disk drive emulator. What we have here is a GoTek floppy disk drive emulator. So here it's got, that's where you put your USB stick drive in. That's a display, which displays uh, disk zero to disk 99. And you can go up and down your disks with these two buttons here. So you need one of those. And what we're going to do is install custom firmware. Because although this has built-in firmware, it's not compatible with a lot of samplers, keyboards, instruments, etc. So we need custom firmware. The custom firmware is called HXC firmware. And that's what we're going to install. You also need one of these. And this is a USB to serial programmer. And what this does is you plug it in the USB port and that gives you 5 volts and ground and receive and transmit for your GoTek. If you can see here, he's got these pins. Well, the GoTeks don't actually come with pins, so you have to buy some little header pins and they literally just solder in really easily. And then the other thing you need is some little jumpers. When you buy your little USB to serial adapter, this one actually came with the wires for like three or four pounds. And I think the only other thing which I've said already is the HXC license. Right, as you can see, here's the back of your GoTek drive. That's where your floppy power connector would go. So we're going to connect the power on there, power the GoTek when we're using it with the USB to serial adapter. If you don't use any of those, that's your standard floppy drive cable that goes into your actual device when you finally installed it. And as I said before, you can see here these two pins. Put a jumper across if you want to reset. That pin there, that pin there, is, or receive and transmit. That's got a jumper across those two pins to enable us to program it. You can see on this serial adapter here, we've got five volts, ground, and then we've got receive, transmit, and there's a spare pin there for 3.3 volts output. I've used the black wire as the plus five volts. This is the plus five volts on the GoTek drive. I've used the white one as the ground. So you can see here, plus five volts, white one is the ground. And then we want to go onto these two pins here and here, which is the send and receive. And what you do, you, you cross them over. You can see that we've got the receive coming out of here is the gray wire. So that wants to go to the transmit on the GoTek next to the jumper here, like that. That's that one. And this sort of uh, purpley browny wire is the transmit on the USB to serial interface. That wants to go to the receive on the GoTek, which is the one next to it. So when you first plug in your USB to serial adapter, it won't find it because you've got no drivers. We're running Windows 8.1 here. Got into the control panel. I got into the device manager. And if we look down these list of devices here, when I first plugged in the USB to serial, it came up as other devices and it said uh, USB to URART bridge. What you do is click on click on it and then update driver. And then you say search a specific location on your computer for the driver. So what you want to do before you do this is to go to a website. It's called the Silicon Labs website. And you want to search on there for something called a CP2102 driver. Now that CP2102 driver, or I think it says CP210X because there's a whole series of them. That's the driver you want. So you need to download that driver. Put it on your system in a place where you know, maybe on the desktop. And then when this first comes up under other devices, like we said earlier, update the driver, go to a specific location and get the driver off your desktop and it should work. If it doesn't work, which it, in my case it didn't because I'm running Windows 8.1, it's different on different operating systems. I did a bit of research and the way to fix this is again go to the Silicon Labs website download a legacy driver and what I downloaded was the Windows Vista driver and then you go into the folder and there's two drivers. There's like an X32 which is a 32-bit driver and there's an X64 which is a 64-bit driver. Now this is a 64-bit system 
I installed the 64-bit driver and it all works perfectly. So Windows 8.1 users use the legacy Vista driver, it seems to work. And the only other thing is, I'll just show you here, once you've done that, under ports, it says COM1 and LPT. Once you've done that, and you when you plug in your USB to serial adapter, it comes up. So it says Silicon Lab CP210X to URAT Bridge COM3. And that's what you want to see on your computer. So once you've sorted out your driver for your USB to serial adapter from the Silicon Labs website, this is what you do. You can see you've got the GoTek drive here. As I showed you before, you've got the uh, send and receive, the power at the back, connected to your USB to serial adapter. And this is really confusing. It confused me. You look at the front of the GoTek and there's no lights on. And you think, have I done something wrong? Have I got no power to the GoTek? Took me ages to work this out. Basically what happens when you've got this just behind there, the programming jumper in, you get no display. But trust me, the GoTek is on and ready to be uh, downloaded with the new firmware. Right, so you've got your GoTek plugged in for a USB adapter. The next thing is you need the actual firmware. So you need to go to this website here called HXC2001. You need to go to the shop page. And on the shop page, you see here STM32 USB HXC floppy emulator firmware. Now this is what you want. It costs 10 euros. Yes, I'm sorry you have to pay for it. And then you press the buy and then they'll send you an email with a password for the software. So obviously then you, you download the software and then you're ready to go. I will point out, which I didn't realise when I did this, I thought if you bought one piece of software you could use it on more than one emulator. You can't. Uh, every time you want to flash a different emulator, so say if you've got one for your Roland sampler and you want to flash one for say an Akai sampler, you've got to buy two licences. Right, so once you've paid for your licence, it gives you a password and it gives you full instructions of what software to download. I think the software we downloaded from the site was the 2001 HXC site was STM32 Serial Bridge Zip. I think there's, there's another one here, HXC Floppy Emulator Soft.zip we downloaded and HXC USB Firmware we downloaded. I think those are the three we downloaded. Uh, so I've uh, extracted the serial bridge zip which is this one here which is serialbridge.exe so if we do this right this is a little program that comes with it so serial bridge right it says connection here so you need to be connected to the internet with your computer so make sure you've got an internet connection uh, login which i'll obscure is my email then there's the password which you get when you've purchased your license they give you an email password and then status is nothing here for the moment and then because we've installed our driver for our serial to usb device it, this is and it's on port com3 so you select that if i press that yeah, it's com3 and then what i found most confusing was you think well, what do you do now so you press the open button here and then you'll get this transmit and receive. And then after a little while, you'll see the numbers changing, which means it's talking to the GoTek. You can see your two send and receive LEDs are on. So that's ready to put the firmware over to the GoTek. So I'll show you the next step. So what you want to do next is press connect. And that's why you need the internet connection because it connects to the server to validate your license. And then you'll see these TX and RX numbers will start to change. As it see, that one's changed already, it's transmitting and receiving. It means it's talking to the GoTek. So when that's happening, all you've got to do then, press program, and it says <laughs> device detected, one unit left. And what that means is, because I've bought a license, I've got one license. So now, press the program button, it says starting. And I can see that the transmit and the receive numbers are going up and down. So you can see here at the moment, status 13, 15 out of 100 is going up. So when it gets to 100, uh, your firmware should be loaded and it should say complete. Oh, all right, so there we go. It says done, zero units left. So that means I've loaded the firmware and the license I've just bought onto the GoTek. Right, so that's the firmware downloaded. And what we want to do now, leave your USB in. Uh, we don't need the send and receive, so take those out. We do need the power though, because we need to go on to stage two. And all we need to do, this little jumper here, is the programming jumper. So I'm just going to take that off, and then I'm going to take the USB out, and then plug it back in again. And you should be able to see, it says LDR. 
which means it's ready to load the firmware. So we'll do the next stage in just a second. Right, the software you downloaded from the HXC 2001 site, one of the pieces of software it recommends is this one here, which is HXC FE USB HFE beta firmware. So you unzip that, open that up, and then what you want to do is First of all, get a USB stick. So I've got an old four gig one. I'll, I'll put it in, I'll, I'll bring it up so you can see it. And what we'll do is I'll right click on there and I'll put format. And it wants to be formatted in, uh, it says file system here, fact default. That is absolutely fine, quick format. So I press start. Yep, okay to format, format complete. So that's absolutely fine. We're back on the uh, HXC firmware zip we've opened. Uh, you want to take a look down the list here and it says the file you're looking for is a UPD file which is at the bottom here. And just pull that file across to your USB stick and it's done. So the next thing we'll do, I'll take the stick out and I'll show you the next stage. Next stage, we're back on our floppy drive emulator. It's still plugged in. It's still saying LDR load on the front. So what you do is you take your USB stick and you plug it into the front and this will load the firmware hopefully. Ah, it's doing it. Ah, and now it says HXC. So that's that stage done. Right, that's all been updated now. Now it says HXC on the front of the uh, Kotec. So we're going back into uh, the software we downloaded again, the HXC F. E USB beta firmware, double click on that. And then what you want to do now is go to config file. So open that folder there. And since we've got a standard GoTech with three segment display on the front, which displays numbers, which is the disks, we want to use index mode because you've got normal mode, index mode, auto boot mode. So we want to use index mode. So I'm going to open that file there and it's got an hxc.config file. So then all we do then, I will call up our USB drive again. Uh, what I've done with the USB drive is I've taken off the uh, UPD file because we've used that for the update and then we'll just go to this config file and we'll just drag that on to our USB stick and that basically means it's configured for 1 to 100 disks. Now you may say well how do we get our disks to work? Right, well this is what you do. In my case, I want to use this with a Roland uh, S770 sampler. So what I've got to do is find a copy of the operating system, which I'll do right now and quickly show you. Right, so I've been searching the internet and my S770 sampler needs system OS 22.5 and uh, the Roland files are called out files. So I've got one here, which is this one here. It's called S770.out. So that is, as far as I know, that's the system OS for the 770. So I'm going to pull that across, I'll pull that across, copy that onto my USB stick. So at the moment we've got uh, HXC configuration file for the uh, emulator and we've got S770 operating system. Now what you have to do with this, which is it's quite an easy thing to do, you have to rename this file disk 0000. zero, zero, zero dot out so basically it's saying that is disk zero and that's the first file you're looking at which is the operating system which is in the s70 770 sampler that's what it's looking for right we've got the s770 sampler here you can see here we've got the floppy emulator on there with our usb stick in and we're going to turn it on and see what happens Ah, it said it's found the uh, Roland operating system. You can see it's flashing on the floppy emulator, so it's loading it up. And there we go, there's the uh, Roland system all loaded up from the emulator and ready to go. So the next thing we'll do in the next video is we'll actually, now this works, install the emulator into the floppy drive. We'll take the floppy drive out and put the emulator in and get it all sorted out.
another very educational tutorial from Mr. Chumley Warner. Well done, old boy. That's very good stuff. Well, I hope it explains everything. Uh, it's quite a long video, but it does go into depth because there's things on there that other people don't show you and, it, and you really yeah. do need to know. We hope that's been useful. This edition of Take the Fear Out of the Gear is goodbye from me, Jason Bangers without his teeth in. And it's goodbye from me, Mr. Chumley Warner. Next one. Take care.